In this video, we're finally going to get to circuit analysis using phasers. It turns out that the significant portion of mental effort we have to go through in this entire unit has to do with how to get it into a point where we can use our familiar techniques. I can jump right into the main point of today's video. In any circuit that contains sinusoidal AC sources, resistors, R, inductors, L, and capacitors, C, we can actually treat any of these circuits, provided that these are the only things in them, as though they are purely resistive circuits. How we do that is as follows. First, change your resistors, inductors, and capacitors into their impedance forms. Once you've done that, treat the circuit as though it's a resistive circuit. What that means is everything that we studied when we were dealing with purely resistive circuits, in other words, circuits that only have resistors in them, will work here. The only difference is that now we have to use the phasor arithmetic that we've been developing. What you'll notice is really that's just a bunch of complex math. As long as you can work well with complex numbers, all of the regular techniques we know will work which is why the entire field of AC circuit analysis is going to collapse into this in single video lecture. Let's do an example. Here is a voltage source and it's given as 7 angle 0. I'm not done yet because I need to specify the frequency but we'll look at that in a moment. I have a resistor, and let's say it's a 1K resistor, and an inductor, which we're going to say is a 3 Henry inductor. Now remember, we can't do anything with this circuit yet because we don't know the frequency of our cosine wave. I need to specify that as well. And let's say for today that omega is 10 radians per second. Now that we're here, we can start asking some questions. In particular, what I'd like to know is if this is a voltage source, let's find I, the current through the circuit. So remember, our first step is to turn everything into impedances. At omega is 10, our inductor's impedance is J times omega 10 times 3, the inductance, or 30J. The unit actually would be ohms, although it's a little bit confusing because we're dealing with a complex number. But for the most part, ohms would be accurate. The impedance of the resistance is just the resistance itself, 1,000 ohms. Let's now redraw the circuit with these numbers in there. So my resistor doesn't change. My inductor actually gets replaced by a resistor. And I put in its impedance. Now remember, I said that I could basically do all of the things that I used to know how to do with resistor circuits, and that's still true. These two impedances are in series, which means I can find an equivalent impedance. ZEQ is the sum of these two, ZR plus ZL, or in my case, 1000 plus 30J. Notice now this is complex, but that's okay. 
I can redraw again. Notice that I'm keeping the angle. Oh, we don't need that top resistor. Notice how I'm keeping the angle in as zero for my voltage source. It's important to remember that you should be always keeping track of where your phase angles are. This is 1000 plus 30J. It's often relevant to turn everything into a phaser, especially now, because I'm going to be using Ohm's law, and to find the current I have to divide the voltage by my impedance. A division is best done in phaser form. It turns out that this impedance in phaser form is 1,000.45 approximately with an angle of 1.7 degrees. You can confirm that if you'd like. Well, all I want is the current and now I can use Ohm's law. I is V over Z equivalent. 7, angle 0, over 1,000.45, angle 7, 1.7, sorry. And that gives me 6.997 times 10 to the power of negative 3 with an angle, remember I'm subtracting, of negative 1.7. The unit is amps. I can also write this approximately as 7 angle 1.7 degrees milliamps. So the key thing here is that my impedances were in ohms and my current is just in amps like it normally would be. Again, it's a complex number and we're going to deal with the question of what it means to be out of phase with the voltage in future lectures. This means that everything we're familiar with will work once we turn our resistors, inductors, and capacitors into their complex impedances. Specifically, we have all of the tools of nodal analysis. We can use KVL. We can use KCL. We can use Tevin and Norton. And importantly, we can use superposition. We treat all circuits as though they are purely resistive, and the only difference is now we have to use complex arithmetic rather than real numbers. The next step is to look at really what that phase difference between the voltage and the current means. As a preview for the next video, that phase difference shows up when we're dealing with the power in the circuit.